Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Adelaide and I like sharing the books that I'm reading at any point in time or those that I've read in the past. And I like call, calling such books my up shelvers. So symbolically just saying that they deserve to be up my shelf because I have learned a lesson or two from reading them. So those are the types of books that I enjoy reading. So today I'd like to share with you those that I've read in the last few years, ever since I started uh, trying to read as regularly as possible. So I'm excited to share these books with you. In my intro video that you will find here, I explain the type of books that I enjoy reading. And if you go in there, you'll find that one of these books on this pile here influenced my drive for reading. So I'm excited to share this uh, list with you. And I hope that some of the books that I will have here because some are new, some are old uh, from bygone years, like throwback books. I hope that some of the ones that I'll share here you've also read. If you have read any of them, do comment in the comment section below and let me know which ones you've read and as well as which ones you'd like me to share my thoughts and lessons on. So without further ado, let's, let me start to show you the books that I've actually read in the last few years. And I've sort of ordered them in, in the order of recency from like the ones from way back and until I uh, the latest ones that I've read. So that's the order in which I will do them. And hopefully it's an exciting list for you as, as, as much as it is for me as well. So the first book uh, that I have is Ian Nevinson's Yesterday I Cried. So this is one of the very first books that I read when I was trying to start uh, reading regularly and when I was uh, gaining more curiosity into people's lives. And Ian Nevinson has done remarkably well for herself. I mean, she's an, an influential woman uh, in the world uh, in, in terms of motivating others and uh, trying to make uh, people find and resolve their issues in, in families and relationships in day-to-day -day living. So I really admire a lot and I'm glad that I got to read one of chose that I chose and got to read one of her books really. And this book was one of the first ones that I read uh, as I embarked on trying to read books on a regular basis. I love this book. I really, 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 really love and appreciate Ian Lovance and Since Today I Cried. It's one of my first books. I've also read uh, this one everybody has read. And let me know if you've read it as well, but this is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. This one, everybody has read. I have read it too, and I'm glad to have uh, read it because it, it definitely taught me a lot about managing my finances, just financial awareness, you know, how to handle um, that understanding in life in terms of how we view wealth and how to accumulate it, and, and any of the few nuggets that we know Robert Kiyosaki would give. So I've read this as well in the last years. Great book. I've also read Rita Marley's No Woman, No Cry. Yes, I do read uh, books uh, from artists a lot. If, if they are great, if they've done great work. And Rita Marley is Bob Marley's uh, wife, the unchallenged king of reggae. There is no way I would not have read this book. And because she lived with him, I knew that the story she's going to give gives us a window into Bob Marley's life and how they lived it together. So I got this book years back and I read it and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I remember when my mom visited, she also grabbed it when she saw it on my shelf and read it. And she thoroughly enjoyed it as well. Great book. Uh, I have read as well. This one is um, My Father, My Monster by Macintosh Polela. So Macintosh Polela is a South African journalist, a former journalist, and at the time of writing this book, he was the spokesperson for South African National Police uh, Services. So he wrote this book about his childhood, his, his upbringing, and it really touched me. It's one of the books that left uh, a, a, a sad impression on me because of the struggles, the, the challenges in their upbringing when they lost their mother. Uh, tragically and how the father seemingly was remorseless about how the whole incident happened but this book touched me a lot uh, that he outpoured uh, his, his uh, sentiments about how his upbringing and yet he's someone that when you see on TV you don't ever think or imagine that that could have been his uh, upbringing but it was and so this is My Father My Monster by Macintosh Polela. I read it a long long time ago I think about 10 years ago and I still haven't forgotten about this book the next book is another very uh, heavily marketed book that I think everybody has read as well, but it's a great book. So this is Timothy Ferris's The 4-Hour Workweek. 
I would definitely have bought uh, and read this book because I wanted to understand what Tim Ferriss would be implementing in his life so that he can reduce the number of hours he has to work or his reliance on a formal job, you know, starting a business and making sure that it pulls through and that it sustains you. And I was curious to just learn the latest. Uh, methods in tech at that time and this was a few years back as well I think this was eight or nine years ago when I read this book and it left a huge impression on me as well in terms of how I look at having a job you know job security what it actually means uh, and how else it is that you can look at your life and how you earn a living so this one I think everyone has got it if you've got this let me know in the comment section but I think the bulk of us have got Tim Ferriss um, the four hour work week and this one as well um, a very good book. Uh, this is Barack Obama's Dreams for My Father. And I also think that almost everybody has, has gotten a hold of this book and read it at some point. Great book. He's a remarkable man. Um, he even become the first um, African-American uh, president of the United States. There is no way we would not have been curious about his life, where he comes from and who he is. And I definitely was one of those people and I bought it. And I read it, I think this must have been about eight or so years ago as well, around the time that I think he released it, or maybe he released it a few years earlier. But I thoroughly enjoyed this book, eye-opening, just appreciating the fact that it didn't come from an easy uh, or privileged background either. And uh, being of African-American descent, he had an appreciation of where his father came from and he was curious about it. So I read this book, got into his, um, uh, his life, according to his uh, views about his life, his sentiments, and it was an enjoyable read. Next book is Leaning by Cheryl Sandberg. This one is, was also a very, very, very popular read. A lot of professionals if, uh, knew about this book, especially women, because here yeah, Cheryl Sandberg, who was at that time Chief Operating Officer of Facebook and previously having worked for Google, was sharing her thoughts on women work and the will to lead. That's what this book actually says. And uh, she was examining why women's progress, in her opinion at that time, in achieving leadership roles had stalled. And she was giving her own um, experiences on how she has handled that within the organization she was working in at Facebook and some of her experiences at Google, especially around the time that she had decided to start a family and the support that she required, which was a challenge to get in the professional or working environment. So she examines that in this book as well as gives uh, great advice on how women can actually then overcome those challenges and get themselves into those very much wanted um, and admired leadership roles. So this book is a great read. I continuously refer to it uh, every now and then so that I actually go into new my knowledge and remembrance of some of the nuggets that Sheryl Sandberg gave in this one. Leaning, I think everyone has got this. Let me know if you've got it too, if you've read it as well. I have. And uh, thinking along the same lines in terms of uh, leadership, I was curious to get practical ideas, you know, thematic ideas, like once I start to lead my team, what do I actually do? And I also then got Joe Owen's How to Lead. I think Joe Owen is one of the masters of leadership uh, and how you can actually achieve it through practical ways. This book is full and uh, of details of how you can actually practically implement uh, leadership within your teams and here it actually says how to be a leader that people want to follow because that's the idea that it gives that in order for you to succeed in leadership you have to actually pitch yourself such that people like your ideas and that they would want to follow you because they can see how practical and achievable your ideas are and they can see your vision and they can therefore trust your leadership and it gives everything in here including once you get into the teams how to actually start embarking on leadership how to test it out how to strengthen it over time and i found this book quite interesting you cannot read this book continuously like a novel page by page you know opening it up and reading every day until you get to the end that's not how you're going to read how to lead instead it works best when you look at certain topics based on the challenges or the areas in which you want to learn and then you read about that you practice it you reflect it you implement it uh, in your role. I think that's best. Uh, that's the best approach in terms of how you can use Joe Owens how to lead. But I've read this book. I'm so glad I got it because uh, it has been that place, that knowledge bank, you know, the knowledge base I go to whenever it is that I feel like I'm missing it or I need to polish up on some of my leadership. This is a great read. If you find it 
um, and you want to assume leadership or in a, you are in a leadership role and you want to polish up, I think this is a great read. And I continuously refer to this. This is not a once-off read. I definitely go back every now and then. And then here I've got Trevor Noah's Born a Crime and other stories. I also think a lot of people probably have bought this. Let me know if you have. But Trevor Noah, being a comedian, wrote his story, the story of his life, and how he was born to a black mother and a white Swiss father in apartheid, South Africa times, and how that literally uh, turned him into a crime because that type of union or relationship was not allowed. There was no interracial uh, relationships that were accepted at that time. And so that's what he means by being born in crime. And he tells the story of how they grew up in poverty, just like any of us. Uh, the narrations he gives just remind you of, of exactly how we all grew up. Well, many of us uh, grew up and uh, it's all very familiar. And as much as he puts humor into it, you can see the seriousness of this story as well. And of course, how it has impacted his quest for success and how our fires come now that he's a world-renowned uh, comedian who is on the world stages in New York and places like that. So Bonnie Crime, it was a great, great read. It uh, definitely uh, gave me a view of Trevor Noah's life and how much he actually doesn't come either from a background of privilege, but he said to fight his way up from being a small naughty boy to being a, a grown man who actually understands uh, how he can get what it is that he wants in life. So this is a great read. Um, and then this one is Braving the Odds by Nizinga Melu. Uh, who is a Zambian. She is uh, currently, I think, the CEO of APSA Bank Zambia, a remarkable woman. I think she is found on social media a lot because she does try to maintain a presence there. And this is how I got to know about her book. And I appreciated having known about it because I wanted to read uh, from a fellow uh, African woman how she has risen uh, through the corporate ladder, uh, the challenges she has faced, and the advice that she can give. And Ms. Inga Melut went through the lengths uh, of doing that in this book, including her personal story of her life and a simple farm upbringing, you know, and how they were happy uh, living that way because that's all she knew. But also, sadly, how she lost her mother at a tender age of 13 and how she fought through trying to find the right career for herself by starting off in nursing and failing on that career path. And then, of course, uh, getting into finance and banking and doing very well in it. It's a great read. Uh, for an African woman who has done remarkably well uh, for herself. I definitely wanted to learn from her and I found this to be great read. If you can lend your hands on this, Mizinga Melus, uh, uh, Braving the Odds, it's a great, great read. Almost uh, same thing as uh, Cheryl Sandberg's Leaning, but of course within an African context and I think the challenges are pretty much the same. It's just good that it's a local context, you know, where she expresses the very same challenges and uh, her own ways in which she actually overcame them, corporate politics and issues like that. This is a great read and I enjoyed it. Read it a few years ago, I think it must, have, it must be a year or two ago, and uh, this will be a great read if you have a chance to get it. If you've read it already, let me know what your thoughts are on uh, Braving the Odds by Ms. Ndamelo. And this one is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. This one is a no-brainer read. I think everyone has got it. It's not a new book. You probably all have read it and uh, I've read it too. And I thoroughly enjoyed as well Napoleon Hill's wisdom, as much as he was one of the, you know, ancient times authors in, in the early 90s, I think that he imparted a lot of knowledge in terms of, again, uh, what Robert Kiyosaki was probably trying to also let us know about uh, wealth accumulation. But in this particular book, Napoleon Hill says he gained his knowledge from interviewing a lot of successful American, I think the bulk of them are American businessmen, inventors uh, of, the t of that time and how they succeeded and how they pushed through and kept trying no matter what challenges they faced and how he says that is the key to success you know uh, as long as you think in your mind that you're going to get rich from a certain idea and you pursue it and you don't give up and you you see it yourself in it in your vision then you definitely are going to get through it because then you implement the right steps and the right plan for you to get to it so this is a, a great read it's it, it sits on the lines for me of a practical, but as well as some philosophical, you know, ways of thinking, not always practical. It's it's a controversial read, I think. But I think the nuggets that I wanted from it, the ways of thinking, you know, uh, and the ways of changing my mindset, I liked uh, about this book and what it says. So this one, let me know as well if you've read it. I think, think in Grow Rich, everybody has read this one. This one is an interesting read, one of uh, the latest uh, releases, I think, in uh, 
South Africa from a South African um, artist called uh, Proverb. That is uh, that is his uh, artistic name, but it's called Tebo Tekisho. And this is the book of Proverb, his name. And uh, Proverb is actually the Idols presenter in Idols South Africa. And he is quite, um, to me, the way I view him is he's achieved a lot uh, in the music um, industry when he was a rapper. I think it's he was because I don't think he still actually actively practices uh, the music um, that he did before. But now he definitely is still in media. So he is uh, a media personality. And he has penned down his life in this book. And I enjoyed reading it because, again, I was, I was curious. I also think uh, that... Um, Proverb is, 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 he appears quite humble and is going. And I wanted to see how you have written a book about his life and where he came from and what keeps him so grounded. And I think this book does justice in that. And he was sharing his personal life as well. And I think the unfortunate uh, incidents that happened where he had to separate from his wife and the circumstances around that. And I think he tried his best to also, I mean, as, as sad as it is, to explain in his book what could have happened. So I enjoyed his book. He also shares how he's, he's accumulating wealth through uh, property acquisitions. And I think he shares that well enough for anyone who reads this book to also learn one or two things. So I like uh, Proverbs, the book of Proverbs. And this is um, Mark Manson's uh, book that I think everyone also has, which is the, the Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. And... I do apologize for the French. It's, it's a great book to really reflect on what's important in life and the things that you should really be caring about with the amount of time that you've got on this earth and the things that you should probably just leave and not uh, give too much thought and energy and um, uh, pay attention to. So I like this book. He's, uh, Mark Manson also has a, a, a very unusual way of writing because the title sounds the way it is. The book is also like that in the very beginning especially. But I think it gets more serious as it goes through the book. It becomes more of a personal development book and less of a you know jocular swear words uh, type of book and I appreciated how it ended with some very sobering uh, narrations of uh, loss of some uh, one of his friends in a tragic accident suddenly and how that has taught him that life is as short as it is so this one was a great read uh, and it's it's, it, it, it's like between humor and seriousness as well almost like uh, Trevor Noah's Born in Crime but I like the fact that he decided to write it in his own style, different from other styles, and he still imparts the knowledge that I think he wanted to. So this one is a great idea. I think many people have got it. I think many people have got it. Let me know if you've read this book. Another artist, I've also read Tina Turner's My Love Story. So when she released her, her autobiography, a book that she has written herself to, to continue uh, her life story and tell us exactly how she's handled and believed in love once again, I was going to buy that book and I did and I've read it. It's a book that is really um, very honest. I think she based it all in this book, her early years and as well as her later years and uh, the progression in her life and how she is right now in her older years as well, including some of her health challenges. It really is a very deep book bearing it all and I've enjoyed it. I would definitely review it in another video if you really want, but I think Tina Turner's My Love Story uh, did uh, give us a very good picture of where she is right now because I was wondering, like, where is Tina Turner now, you know, what does the, what the media is saying about it? is that really what's happening? And I think because she's given herself the opportunity to write, I definitely want to hear it from the horse's mouth, and I did. So this one is a great book. So these are all the books that I've um, read in the last few years, um, until the last few months. And... Um, Right now, the book that I'm reading is this one, which is why it's got the highlight uh, on it, because I do highlight as I read, I make marks, and that's just my reading style. And this is um, a remarkable book, a thought-provoking, a heart-wrenching uh, book, The Boy Who Never Gave Up. This is a refugee's epic journey to triumph by Dr. Emmanuel Taban. So Dr. Taban is a medical doctor in South Africa who, is, uh, who was born in South Sudan and ran away, fled the war in South Sudan in 1994 as a 16-year-old. And he had to fend for himself on a journey on foot and on the bus from the Horn of Africa right at the top, South Sudan, getting lost along the way until he got to South Africa. The bulk of it on foot, and sometimes on bus, depending on whether or not he had money, but he traveled this journey on his own. 
in a quest to find education and a better life for himself so that he can go back home and show his mother that he'd actually left home for something. I've not finished this book, but it's worth a read. This is an incredible man. He has gone through uh, an incredible journey. Very encouraging. I have a son, and so as I read it, I identify so closely with that the fact that this was a young man. When he left 14, 15, he was already uh, facing some of the challenges that I think a grown man should have to be responsible for, but he was carrying it on his shoulders. And he's done remarkably well because he has peered some of the research in COVID-19 um, uh, solutions for South Africa in the medical field. So this is a great, great achiever. Given the background that Dr. Emmanuel Tavani has, I'd say this is a great read. If you get the opportunity, if you find it, I know it's on Amazon, I know it's on uh, digital platforms that sell books, but it's also in bookshops. Do get this one and you get to learn even as his, um, his views also in terms of politics within Africa and of course basically within South Sudan where he comes from and how that has affected progress and how that is reflecting even in the fact that South Sudan is still amongst the poorest countries yet it's very rich in resources. So you learn a lot from Dr. Emmanuel Tavern's uh, narration of his life, very, very touching book. I mean, you could cry, I have not cried, but uh, that's only because I guess I'm too embarrassed to do that while I'm reading a book and sitting on my own, but it definitely would tear at your heart. So this one is the book that I'm reading. As soon as I finish it, I'm going to review it to give my thoughts and share with you my lessons from this book. And I hope that you will enjoy. This will definitely be in the next video that I'm going to share. But let me know if you're in this, on this, onto this book as well, if you've read it and what your sentiments about it have been. But this is my current book. Great read so far. And I think I've gone uh, possibly three quarters into it. And I do have a book that is coming up as being the next book after this. And this is Rachel Hollis' Girl, Stop Apologizing. So this one I'm very curious about. I, I have read, I think, a few pages of it as an audiobook, but I really wanted the, the hardcover and I've got it now. I received it today, actually, uh, as a delivery from an uh, online bookshop. And now I'm going to go to it next after reading Dr. Emmanuel's, uh, Emmanuel Taban's The Boy Who Never Gave Up. So I can't wait to read this. This book, from some of the reviews I've seen on Goodreads and, and similar platforms, some people find it controversial, are not happy about how she expressed it, but that, that's what has made me curious to read it. And so I'm going to read it and give my views as well and my thoughts. I like to look at the positive side of what a person is trying to share with you and the lessons, and I hope that um, that's what people have been looking at. And we have different ways of telling stories, so it will never be perfect, but I think if we get the one or two lessons, from each book we should be able to learn. So this is my next one and I'm quite excited. So this is my list of books that I decided to share with you today. As I've been saying with quite a few of them, let me know if you've read any of these and what your views on some of these were. Let me know if you also have books that you would want uh, me to look into and review. And as you probably already know, I'm into nonfiction, so it's going to be autobiography, biographies, memoirs, personal development, personal growth, anything that I definitely can practically uh, take away from a book. That's what I want. Far away from fantasy and romance and similar. So that is my reading style. I really enjoyed uh, sharing these books with you and I hope that you enjoyed it as I went through uh, them with you. And if you have, do subscribe to my channel and so that we will see each other in the next videos. But otherwise, hopefully you had fun in this video I had. And thank you for watching and cheers for now.